Okay, go ahead. This is a technical machine, and we want to treat this machine with utmost respect. This video is going to introduce the FAF cover lock surgery machine and also demonstrate how to do the cover stitch hem. This is what the cover stitch hem looks like. It will have two rows of straight stitching on the top and then the serge stitch on the back. It's a great hem for knits, anything that's stretchy because you can stretch that hem and it will not pop. Before we show the sample, we're going to talk about the serger and the different important parts. This machine will do lots of different kinds of stitches, but we're only going to focus on the cover lock stitch. So let's just talk about some of the basic parts of the machine. We have our tension discs here. This is for the left needle. This is for the right needle. We are going to skip the upper and lower loopers and go clear over here to the far right, the cover stitch looper. A couple of things we need to get set up. We need to make sure our telescopic thread guide is pulled all the way up. And then here on the back, we need to make sure that the spool table is pushed all the way back. That's very important to let the threads flow freely. Okay, we're back to the front of the machine. I want to show you that we have a little table here that's set up just for the cover lock stitch. Our needles are in the front position instead of the back position and wider apart. You will notice that the left needle appears longer than the right needle. They're just in a different position and that is normal to have the left needle longer, looking longer. Okay, we're gonna open up the machine I'm going to just show you some guides here. The number two stitch is what we are going to be doing. Our tension is already shown here. Six for the left needle, six for the right needle, and one for the cover lock um, looper. We can look down here also for the thread guide. And we can also look in the book. The program overview number two. It's just letting us know where the needles need to be, what our stitch length is between three and four. I like 3.5. Our stitch width is 3.5. The stitch finger has been removed. The upper looper has been dropped down and the power table is put on. And it also reviews the tension settings. The order of the threading will be the cover stitch looper, then the left needle and the right needle. So we'll start up here. I already have the thread in the guide up here. It is very important that you remember a couple of things when you're threading. First, be sure to put the presser foot up. That will open up the tension discs. Really is important that our thread goes into the tension disc in order to get a good stitch. Hold the thread top between your hands. Put it in this loop, whoops, back here. It's quite tight. I think it's like flossing teeth. Now the thread goes into the tension disc and you can pretty much hear it click when it goes in. This is magenta color and the code is magenta square. So just follow along. There's a square, square, square. Come along, find the other square. This machine makes it really easy to thread. Here's another square. And now we need to expose the cover stitch looper. Right now you can't see it, but I'm gonna just move my hand wheel. Here is the cover stitch looper. We can't see all of it because it's still hidden back here. So you'll need to take the end of your tweezers, find this little lever way down here by the stitch finger and pop it up. Just pop it up to expose that eye of the looper. You will not have to pop it back down again because it will happen automatically. So we have an open eye right here that I'll put the thread in. And then I'm going to thread front to back in the eye of the cover stitch looper. Leave at least a four inch thread tail. I'm gonna be careful that it doesn't get caught on anything. There we go. We'll just leave it free for right now if I can get it untangled. Come on, I'm close. There we go. OK, 
okay four inch thread tail just put it right there to the side for now okay that's finished we can go ahead and close our door you want to make sure that power table is flat now we'll do the left needle it's already up here in the thread guide bring it under the handle that's very important if you put the thread on top of the handle there's no way the thread can get in the tension discs hold your thread taut get it in that little thread loop we'll try again I still like to hold the thread taut as it goes down into the tension disc. There's a little hook here. It comes straight across into the take-up lever. Bring it to the left thread guide here. Now we need to bring our needles to their highest position. We have another thread guide here, and there's one more right above the needles. We will thread the needle front to back. Tweezers are very helpful. I'm going to lower the pressure foot just temporarily to help me get that. Try not to get my hand in front of the camera. There we go. Just keep that thread to the left side. Now we're ready to do the right needle, but I need to make sure my presser foot is up. I make sure the thread is under the handle. Now we go into the right needle placement here. Make sure the thread gets down in the tension disc. It will feel a little tight because it's on such a high setting. Little hook shares the take-up lever with the left needle, but put it in a different slot here. And we'll put them in the thread guides. And now we'll thread the needle. go. All right, now we're going to put all three threads free from each other under the presser foot towards the left. Okay, then we can lower the presser foot. It is always important that you do a test stitch. Get some scrap fabric, do a little hem fold, and test it out. You want to make sure that everything's threaded correctly, you've got good tension, and you may need to change the setting for the differential feed if it's stretching your fabric. Right now I have mine at 1.5. We don't want to sew with pins, but you will have your pins to start with and take them out as you go. Now I've already done a sample here, so I'm going to continue on where I left off. Raise my presser foot. Lower it. There are numbers on the power table. The ones in the back are centimeters. The ones in the front are inches. You want to just make sure that both needles are going to hit onto this uh, fabric fold back here. We can always trim off whatever is excess. So we'll turn the machine on and get started. When you get started, you may need to pull your fabric taut in the back just to help Guide it along, start slow, and then you can pick up speed. Like I said, do a test first just to make sure everything is in order. If you were sewing just a flat fabric, you could just stitch all the way off. But let's pretend this was a shirt or a pair of pants and it's circular. So we would uh, sew all the way around and then we would sew over our existing stitches for about a half or an inch. And then to get your needles to come out, what you need to do is with your hand on the hand wheel, put your needles down and you'll hear two clicks. You will hear the left click and then the right click. The needles won't go all the way down, but once you hear those two clicks, you will stop and now reverse the hand wheel. Go away from you till the needles come in their highest position. This will give you some thread slack. Once you raise the presser foot, 
those threads will be loose and not locked down into the fabric. So carefully start to pull your fabric out. For some reason that didn't work, I'm going to try it once more. We're going to go down. Because my um, cover stitch looper was still too tight. There we go. Pull those threads out and cut a long thread tail. Even though that looks nice and strong, it is actually a chain stitch. And if I pulled on the looper thread, I could pull the whole thing out. And we don't want that to happen. We want to be able to secure it. So we need to pull the needle threads to the back. Now, you usually can just pull on it here. So I'm going to pull on a thread and just pull one of the needle threads through and see if I can get the other one. They're, loop they're looped, so hopefully I'm grabbing the right one. Nope, that's the looper. Okay, so I got one of them back. Can't find the other one. So I'm on the front side and I'm just going to thread a needle, a hand needle. It's too curled. And then we'll just insert the needle through the fabric to the back side because we want to secure all three thread tails. We'll bring it back here. An important thing to do is take your needle and thread through this loop. This is the looper thread and if I don't lock that in, it can continue to come undone. So I put it through there and then I'll pull this tight. And then we're going to tie a knot. And you could do a square knot or you could just loop the three threads around your finger into the loop to create a knot so that all those threads are secure. I'm going to put my needle through the loop and guide the thread to my stitch. So I'll get a nice tight knot and then I could take these three threads. Don't think the eye of my needle is big enough, but I could take those three threads into my needle and insert the thread tail into the cover stitch right there. And there you've got a wonderful stretch cover stitch hem.